Hello everybody and good evening my time at 9.31 p.m. in Iowa here and I've got an article here poor Joe oh I'll tell you now <laughs> Joe Biden was humiliated by Saudi Arabia Joe Biden's refusal to embrace domestic energy production continues to backfire on both him and the American people, which is sad for us. After doing everything possible to gut energy independence here at home, Biden went to other nations, including OPEC Plus, to plead with them for oil. And Russia, Venezuela, and Saudi Arabia, the president had been met with cold, hard rejection every time. Here in America, officials continue to remind Biden that his only recourse is to reopen domestic pipelines, drilling, and oil leases. <clears throat> Excuse me. Instead of doing this, the president released a statement expressing his disappointment with OPEC, plus cutting back on his daily oil supply, despite his wishes to the contrary. Now, Saudi Arabia is now responding to Biden with a brutal scolding closer look at Saudi Arabia's message to Biden. The Saudi Arabia government admonished Biden for trying to get them to spare him from the political fallout of high gas prices pre-midterms. After claiming that OPEC's plus call wasn't driven by an agenda to hurt the United States, Saudi Arabia said members nations within OPEC plus ultimately make decisions for their common interests. In another humiliation for Biden, it wasn't missed on Saudi Arabia that he wanted to avoid a spike in U.S. gas prices ahead of the midterms. According to Saudi Arabia, however, following Biden's request would have led to poor economic outcomes for OPEC plus nations at large. Ultimately, the notice from Saudi Arabia showed that other nations around the world will do what is in their own best interest. That's something Biden's not done for us. We should be his best interest, and we're not. This is all the more reason why Biden should be acting in America's best interest. I just said that. Oh, well. <laughs> I should have read down just another line, and I could have read it right there. Sadly, he refused to do this at every turn. Uh, this also wasn't, wouldn't be the first time that foreign leaders embarrassed Biden on the world stage. Recently, he was given a talking to by French President Emmanuel Macron for stating that Russia's possible use of nuclear weapons against Ukraine has the world approaching Armageddon. Well, I've read that before. Right now, Joe Biden is being raked over the coals online following the latest release from the Saudi Arabia government. The fact that the president didn't mind gas prices spiking only after the midterm elections also isn't doing him any favors. Nevertheless, even after this latest embarrassment, it still doesn't appear as though Biden learned his lesson. After all, there's been no announcement from the White House of America going back to our roots of energy independence, drilling, oil leases, and U.S. pipelines. As a result of this, Biden is, for all intents and purposes, holding America hostage. Yes. There it is in black and white, people. We're hostages. In any way or shape you want to think. Pathetic. My, oh my, oh my. Alabama police officer shot in Sunday standoff. Police officer in Hoover, Alabama, was shot Sunday morning during an hours-long standoff with a suspect who was subsequently taken into custody. Hoover is a fast-growing suburb in Birmingham. The situation began on Interstate 459 around 11.25 a.m. when a motorist called 911 to report multiple gunshots had been fired into his vehicle. No one was injured during the initial shooting. Officers were dispatched to the area and provided a description of the suspect vehicle, which they quickly spotted. 
As police vehicles attempted to apprehend the suspect vehicle, it took an exit ramp off of the interstate, pulled into the hills at Hoover, or Hoover, an apartment complex off of Lorna Road in Hoover. When police approached the suspect vehicle, the driver opened fire on officers. Hoover Police Department Lieutenant Daniel Lowe told reporters that officers returned fire, though it remained unclear whether the suspect was hit at the time. Residents at the apartment complex told local reporters they heard eight to nine gunshots during the exchange. The suspect fled the area in his vehicle, entered an apartment in the complex. Lowe said officers immediately began attempting to negotiate with the shooter in an effort to have him safely surrender. It is unclear whether the negotiations led to the suspect's surrender, but he was reportedly taken into police custody at 3.41 p.m. Lowe did confirm that the suspect walked out of the apartment under his own power, although he had been shot in one arm. He was being treated at a local hospital on Sunday evening for his injuries, which were said to be non-life-threatening. The officer who was struck by gunfire during the exchange with the suspect was transported to the Uni University of Alabama Birmingham Hospital. He was reported to be alert and stable when he was transported from the scene and is expected to fully recover from his injuries. Thank you, Jesus. He was released from the hospital on late Sunday. Friends of the injured officer said he was shot once in his arm and once in his bulletproof vest. During the standoff, tactical officers from multiple local agencies in Jefferson and Shelby counties came to the scene to assist. U.S. Marshals also assisted in the response and a stage area for the various agencies on site was established at Aldridge Gardens, a neighboring apartment complex. Officers established a large security perimeter around several apartment buildings and some residents were evacuated at around 2 p.m. Residents who were evacuated were ushered to the complex leasing office for safety and all other residents were advised to shelter in place until the suspect was taken into custody. Hoover Mayor Frank Brecato issued a press statement indicating he had visited the injured officer and his family at the UAB hospital. He added, today's shooting is indicative of the challenges that law enforcement officers face daily in our communities and we are all very fortunate that this incident did not have tragic outcome. Authorities have not yet identified the injured officer or the suspect in custody. Crime is just mm, outrageously out of control. No other words. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. People can barely pay bills in Biden's America. How well we know it. Of all the harm Joe Biden's presidency has caused, the economy is arguably taking some of the greatest body blows. For starters, America continues to deal with a recession as seen by the twice-in-a-row declining GDP rate this year. That's not to mention rising inflation, lower consumer confidence levels, and growing job layoffs. Oh, but there's millions of jobs out there, says Mr. Biden, President. <sighs> Sorry. Biden touted bills like the American Rescue Plan and the inflation Reduction Act as economic, economic wins, economic wins. I couldn't even say economic. <laughs> Yet real world evidence and warnings from economists, economists continue to show these measures aren't rescuing the economy or reducing inflation whatsoever. Well, of course not. If anything, the heavy spending putting in motion by Biden and Congressional Democrats is leaving everyday Americans in a stranglehold. Price out of the economy, new information from Lending Tree reveals nearly one third of the American people have fallen behind on their bills over the past six months. On top of that, 61% of individuals who paid bills late also admitted they don't have the necessary funds. 
Meanwhile, another 40% of Americans confirmed it was easier for them to pay their bills one year ago, as opposed to the present day. Still, the Biden administration continues to argue the economy's doing well. The president's working to meet the needs of the people. You don't want to know what I'm thinking right now. You do not. Sadly, all the evidence exists to the contrary. In fact, additional lending tree data reveals the only way for people to truly steer clear of inflation is for them to increase their income. This, however, is easier said than done. Amid not just rising for all, but also certain businesses putting a pause on hiring. I mean, they can't afford to hire if they can't afford to pay their overhead or the workers they already got in their uh, working situation right now, their businesses. Oh, God, where does this Biden come from? What did they do to his brain? I put one video, you know, if there's a spaceship floating around somewhere, please ask them to come down and pick that man up and take him back up there and replace his brains. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. For Americans who aren't able to boost their income, they have to make sacrifices, such as going to the dollar store for food rather than the grocery store. That's my store, the dollar store. I practically own that sucker. I should have bought shares in the dollar store trade. <laughs> because inflation is here to stay for quite some time. The same goes for problems facing the American people. But I don't mind the dollar store food. I'm just careful what I buy, you know. But, hey, it will survive you. An unsustainable course. If the economy continues down this road, total collapse is inevitable. As Americans battle inflation and struggle to pay bills, the Federal Reserve is repeatedly increasing the interest rate. Now, how does that help to increase the rate? Interest rates go up. That don't make sense on people that don't have any money. But they want a loan so they can pay their rent, keep a roof over their head, and pay their electricity, their water bill, garbage, sewer, whatever else. But yet the interest rates has got to go up. <clears throat> I don't know. Still, somebody gets rich and the poor gets poor. That's the bottom line, isn't it, people? That's the bottom line. This only adds more burdens to the shoulders of those who can least afford it, would I just say. Why don't I read down the line or two before I open my mouth? <laughs> While Biden has every intention of continuing to spend money, run the country into the ground, he can't do it without a supportive Congress. Well, that's true. This is why it's going to be so critical next month for Americans to turn up at the polls, vote red up and down the ballot. I'll tell you. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, folks, I'm going to go dig up some more information. You know, I'd like to get away from Biden's, all his, uh, what do I want to call Merlocky or whatever. Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> I can't pronounce other words, but I can make up good words. <laughs> Merlocky, Merlocky. I've heard that word somewhere, probably when I, I was a child. Probably my parents might have used it. It's a bunch of malarkey. There you go. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'll be back. God bless you. And you are a blessing.